business use case, what we're doing is we're looking at invoices. We want to automate an accounts payable process. And so we might want some information. We might want a lot of information off of this. But for the sake of ease for this demonstration, what we care about really is the invoice number, the date, and the total amount that it costs. So now we're going to go to our FSOF system, and we're going to set that up. So what you're seeing right now is the FSOF administration. And what we see right here listed are the batch classes that we have defined in here. So if you think about the hierarchy, we have batch classes inside of a batch class, and we're just going to open up our invoice one. We have different document types. And so in this case, you can have a slew of document types for a batch class. In this case, we have document types. So a document types are inside of a batch class. And we fed it a, a couple samples. And so we taught it how to classify these kind of documents. Again, the way that it does the classification when we feed those samples, and this will relate for those that have Alfresco already, and um, if you don't have Alfresco already, this will relate later. What it does is it creates an index of the information that's inside of there. It uses a leucine in the back end, and so many of us are familiar with that. And so it has a, a, an importance of words. And so how many times is that repeated? How many, you know, how many times is it inside of the document that I'm processing? So it uses that dictionary to do the classification. And now that I've classified it, I have information. That invoice number, the invoice date, the invoice amount. And, and again, there's a lot more you can do with this processing, but I'm going to make it a very, very uh, vanilla flavoring here. So inside of here, we might have simple rules of how to get that information. I want to emphasize that one of the true benefits of FSOFT is its capabilities of being able to do three-form extraction. What three-form extraction means is that I have the capability of looking at the entire document, looking for patterns, look for key value patterns. So I can say, you know, look for invoice number, look to the around it for a seven-digit number, what have you. I can make rules like that. And you can have more than one rule per document type. So invoice number, we might do exactly that. We might look for invoice no. Because if you remember correctly, which you probably don't, that's what we're trying to find right here, is the invoice number. We're looking to the right of it, and we're looking for a particular pattern. So that's what you would call a simple freeform extraction rule. You also have a tool in here that lets you not really care about that. And you have these advanced extraction rules. So if I go here, I might bring in a sample, that same sample that we were looking at. And I'm, it turns out that I wasn't that confident because it, it said total too many times. So I might want to look at tax, and I want to look to the bottom right of it, but I didn't want to specify that. And so I want a, a rule along these lines for being able to get it, um, get the information. And so now I have this tool, this administration tool, that lets me bring in these samples and be able to test those samples. But I want to emphasize this is freeform extraction. This is merely a utility. If you look at the bottom left here, to create some sort of offset, some sort of relationship between the key and the value that we're looking for. And we can make, again, many of these. So if I were to make a, a simple key up here, and again, I'm just creating a relationship, and make something that's, and I'm just kind of free-forming this. Oh, let's see how good I am at this. And I look to the bottom right of it for an amount, a dollar amount. Is that going to work? So again, this is a very important concept. And the reason I'm not trying to give you training here, but the technical part of this that's important is that you can look around an object. You can make a relationship. So it doesn't matter if I have one flavor of this or 1,500 flavors of this. I can give it a several rules, and it should be able to hit the, that information all the time. And there's much more ways that you can make this more granular and make it more generic area that you're looking for. It really um, depends on the specificity of the information that you're trying to obtain. So now we're looking at traditional mailroom automation. And, and this is not so much. This is still intelligent document capture. So you automate as much as possible. So if we're able to get all the information that we wanted, just go right into your Fresco repository. It just exports out. And so they have a bunch of connectors for how to get that information out. We're getting in um, via CMIS. Um, which is another technical piece that we can go into. But essentially, it's just a content model mapping exercise of saying, here's what it is inside of um, FSOFT. Here's what it is inside of Alfresco with my namespaces and object types. But I have all these documents um, that I need to process as um, that were exceptions. And I caused this exception to happen. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Because I want to show you this traditional mailroom. And so 
you can see that I captured this information. I have some really cool ways of being able to get the information out. If this wasn't retrieved at all, I can go and just click on a value and be able to get that information. So even if you create it in such a way that you're not extracting all the values, you still have a, a good way of being able to get the information and making sure that people index your information correctly. In this case, I said that these things had to be eight digits long, and so I forced this um, at an application level to error out. I can look at this other one, has a smaller dollar amount, and I can do that same thing. And I can push it on. The reason that I wanted to start there is show you that you know, this is still a very valid use case. If I had a bunch of different sources and I'm trying to bring it in, I can go ahead and process that. And so now I can go ahead and look in my Alfresco repository, and this might take us a couple minutes. So within a few minutes, what we're going to see in here is that this is not only getting dropped in as a document, but it's getting dropped in as a document um, that has a, an appropriate naming convention. You can change that naming convention. And also has the metadata and the typing that I care about. And so now I put some back-end logic in there, say, you know, go ahead and put it here. Uh, but of course, you can do whatever you want. If you want to spin a business process, if you wanted to um, make sure that you created the file structure that was necessary, you can do that alert somebody, notify that it's ready for processing. It all depends on what you're trying to do for that processing piece. So now you can see that they're inside of there. So I've looked in there. I have that same document. Now I don't have this general document that's inside of my repository, but I have something that's automatically classified and indexed inside of my repository.